So I have this Zeppelin Air that I repaired about six months ago and sold to somebody. And unfortunately, it has gone faulty again and I've got it back. And it is actually up and working now, but it has an intermittent problem where it will not boot up properly. It will attempt to start, then it will just stay stuck, flashing the red LED, exactly like this one, over and over for hours. Um, but right now, that's been sat in my car for the last six hours, probably, and it's pretty warm in the car. So I'm guessing that it's probably pretty warm inside of here. So I'm thinking anyway, that we have some bad caps on the DSP board, which is causing this Zeppelin to not boot. Because as you know, I have tested a lot of these caps on these boards and the ESR goes super high on them and they're obviously not acting like a capacitor anymore and will be drawing too much current. And the circuit won't be able to start reliably. So, I'm going to try replacing those first, but I'm also going to go over my work that I've done on the power supply because I'm not doubting myself here. I could have botched up what I've done or made a mistake somewhere, ripped. I don't remember the Zeppelin, to be fair. I've repaired a lot of them, but I could have ended up making a mistake uh, when soldering, ripped up a pad, and maybe one of the pads on the power supply is faulty or something. Um, but it could also be the DSP board. This thing's already had a full power supply capacitor repair, so I need to get it to mess up though because I want to show you it messing up, obviously, rather than just saying, "Oh yeah, it's faulty," and then doing a random a random job and not proving to you that there is actually something up with it. So I might end up having to just leave this for a bit, just see what happens. Um, but. The being an intermittent problem, it's not going to be related to the amplifiers of the DSP, fortunately, because these won't go intermittent. They will just short out and fail if they fail. So, um, I mean, there is voltage regulators, the possibility of voltage regulators going intermittent and not running properly. We don't really see what a lot of manufacturers tend to do is where they double up diodes for your main chips here uh, to use them to drop voltage um, rather than having a separate circuit for it. And I've seen it quite a few times where they'll have like a doubled up diode near the CPU voltage regulation area. And one of the diodes goes leaky and intermittent and fails when voltage is applied. And normally replacing those diodes will fix the problem, but it can be intermittent. But as I sort of worked out a bit of a thing with this, it wouldn't fire up in the morning yesterday. And I've had it sat in the car for six hours today and it's just quite a sunny day outside. So it's obviously going to have gotten pretty warm in the car. So I am thinking perhaps just these caps on the board have, have dried out fully and they're causing the system to not work. I haven't seen this yet in a Zeppelin. I haven't seen this. And I think that that is actually faulting. Pressing the power button won't have any effect either. Uh, yeah, I think that that has actually faulted out right now. Because that should have been loaded up. Let me just go get an aux just to confirm that. We've got some uh, music playing there. And we should be booted up by now. This has been about five or ten minutes so far, so I wonder what that was. Hmm. But either way, the Zeppelin Air, you give it 30 seconds to do its initial flash, plug an aux in, play music, that should be coming on to aux mode now. But it does not. It is totally dead. So, that is the fault confirmed. It is intermittently powering on and off. And the customer said as well, uh, even if you leave it in standby, it sometimes won't power back on. So we know it's not an issue from 
cold power, it's an issue when it's been switched off for a bit of time. So, because obviously you'll be put in standby mode, nothing will be getting warm and not much of the circuit will be energised. So, yeah, let's take it apart. So I had somebody ask me, uh, how do you take the Zeppelin Air apart? And it is literally just like the other Zeppelin that I did a video on, uh, the Zeppelin Gen 1. There is a little clip under the cloth. You're going to push on that. Whilst pushing on the centre of the cloth, and it will just go... Uh, they come off ten times easier on the Zeppelin Air, but that's probably because they're... A good five years newer than uh, the, the original Zeppelin, so yeah, let's take those off. So after you take the grills off, you're greeted with the front of the speaker, where there's eight screws that you're going to have to take out the front. Obviously, really careful with the tweeters, because these they'll crush in straight away. I mean, that looks like it's been crushed in. I don't really know what that like mark is on the top of that. I've seen it on quite a few of them. Like a manufacturing defect or something, but if you crush if you crush them in, that's it. You, you're not you're not you're not straightening them out. There's no way you can straighten them out at, at all. So don't touch the tweeters on these speakers. Um, there's probably going to be a, a very little chance of you being able to replace the uh, the dust cap as well because there are sellers that do sell the voice coils for these tw uh, Bowers Wilkins tweeters, but and we've replaced them. I just don't think they sound right afterwards. I just don't think they sound the same. So try not to damage them because, uh, well, it's game over. You might as well just throw it away. Two on the back and the Zeppelin now. One, two, take those out. And then we're gonna take the base off. And I think I've, uh, secured this very well with some kind of adhesive because I can't get this off. I'm not even like flagging it right now either like. I am, you can see me tense like. I'll put something on there. That's definitely not the original glue. I think I've used Maybe T8000 or something? Or E7? That's not E7000, it's too thin. I don't know, but that was, uh, that was glued on properly. So anyway, um, Zeppelin Air, take these two, take these two, and these two little ones at the front. And this will come off, and you can see some electronics. All right, so after you take them off, you can pull the dock away, and there's gonna be two plugs. Um, this one has like a little clip on the top. You have to depress only ever so gently because if you press it too hard, you're going to crush the connector like I've done in the past. So very fragile connector, be careful. And then this is where it gets awkward because there's a connector in there. But luckily that's just a standard Molex. That will just unplug straight away. So, but it's really, really awkward to get back in. Um, so now as well, there's going to be this cable. You're going to want to unplug that. And if you can, try and unplug that one. But that will come off when the, the lid comes off. It's also going to be a bit of copper tape here. You want to make sure you fold this back into place afterwards. Because it, I think it just provides some sort of like RF um, earthing for the uh, uh, front thing here. I don't really think it's an antenna, but I'm not really too sure. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> that comes off, unplug that, be careful plugging this back in because this one is a really shit ribbon cable, actually you can see it's already messed up, I don't know what happens to these, I don't know maybe if they just cook themselves and start like delaminating, but this cable you can just unplug it and all of the pins will just rip off and you can, you can get replacements, obviously, like, easily enough, but it's just annoying when it happens. It's only on certain units, though. So, as we're going to be taking the main board out to unplug this little connector. 
So we take the lid off. You take the lid off, there's going to be this connector. This one here has a, a little clip on it. Try and do it carefully. Don't break it. There we go. And then the AC connector. Mm, there's the back. Off of the Zeppelin Air. Ta da. This is the inside. As you said before. So. Obviously, the caps on the power spy are going to all be good still. We're going to take it out and just check. And we're going to check the main board, see what's going on. Take out the power supply and main board, you actually have to undo that little screw on this little uh, well, it's stability thing, mount, whatever you want to call it. Check that over there. <clears throat> now, as I've had this plugged in, the power supply caps are going to be charged, so... Try not to touch anything on the primary side because you get a buzz. But what you want to do basically is unplug the subwoofer. While that comes undone. It's the mids, I think. And then the tweeters. And then you want to lift both the boards up. This connector on one of them crappy little hooks again. If you find it easier, unplug it on the Wi Fi card. You'll have to sort of bend it out of the way there. And then there's two connectors here. This one's on a hook as well, so. And this one is just unpluggable. There you go. But that one, I'm going to have to get like a screwdriver or some tweezers in there to pop it off. So, so I've got out the boards from the unit and just been giving them a quick look over. To be fair, there's only one thing that I'm not really too happy about on the power supply that I've done, and that's that cap there. It's like elevated off the board. And what I do is I tack one leg of the cap when I've replaced it, and then heat it up again and push it flat to the board so it's perfectly flat. And I just obviously haven't done that properly there, so... Um, but these are all good caps that I've used. These are all um, Panasonic's. You can literally come over here to the standby. Not really too sure. It's a aluminium one or something. <clears throat> I'm not really too sure. I don't really think the power supply is going to be the issue here because. You know, there's uh, there's not really much else that goes wrong on these. It's it's a short circuit that blows out the primary, as normally the case. And my soldering that will be connected. I mean, that looks a bit burnt, but I can't really see anything that is badly done. Oh, flux. Hmm. Don't I'm pretty sure. It's, I'm pretty sure. Well, I always do this. I always scrub the boards afterwards. And I want to scrub this area. I wonder what that is. I think polarized wrong. I'm not that stupid. I am stupid, but I'm not that stupid. Yeah, the cap's in right, as you can see. What is that? Then? I don't know. I must have missed it when I was cleaning it or something or whatever, but there's no bad soldering going on, so oh, I've so. done some testing on the board. And I've found a couple that are bad, but not too many. 9.2 ohms, four microfarads, which is a 4.7 cap. Uh, obviously, you need to observe how they're set up in circuit. Um, because if they're set up with other components in, in line with them, they're going to read weird. Um, but you can get reading off most of these caps on this board, pretty accurate. Uh, so 7.9 ohms, that's not going to help, is it? Um, a 10 microfarad cap, 9 microfarad 6.6 .6 ohms, this one here. 
that's not good. This is uh, 10 microfarad again, which is in line with other components because it's reading 16 microfarads. So there's something else there. We can't get an accurate reading on that. But as the other 10 microfarad nearby is faulty, we can probably just safely assume that it's faulty. That's saying in circuit leaky. These two are straight off of um, the feed. I believe that these two caps, 22 mics. No, they're in line with some other capacitors somewhere. Another rail. Uh, so you're not measured. Uh, you can't really measure these ones over here, but you can measure the ones by the CPU especially, which is a 4.7 again. Which is actually good. Oh no, it's not because it's in line with other parts. So anyway, so anyway, I already know what caps that normally go really bad on these. These ones normally test fine ESR wise. All of these other ones, it's just these lower value capacitors that tend to go. Um, so I don't know what we've done here actually. I mean, I don't want to just yank these off and rip off all the pads, but I've used the wrong values possibly here. Yeah, these are 4.7. Oops. 4.7. I'll put 47s in. Hmm. That's not good, is it? Um, these are definitely 22s. That's a 10. Another 4.7. Yeah. Where have I done that? Another lemon. Hmm. Hmm. Am I about to realise that I've made a big mistake somewhere with this board? Oh, we're still here. 33s. Um, in place of 22s, yeah, sorry. Yeah, um, I'm going to just swap these ones for some uh, 10 microfarads. I don't think I have 4.7s in stock at the minute. I'll have to have a look. That's weird. that's odd, though. Um, oops. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that ain't going to work again, but we'll see. Um, yeah, so I'm going to replace those caps on this board as well, and we're going to see if we can restore it to life. Um, I've got a pair of uh, tweezer uh, desoldering uh, tips here either. So my method of releasing these caps is this. Now, you've got to be careful because there's a lot of small parts nearby. And the pads on this board in particular are low quality or something because they rip. So... Be careful. Um, normally, a bit of twisting, a bit of rocking backwards and forwards. Probably being a bit too careful for the video's sake here, but as long as you're pushing down, the pads will not come off. As you can see on this board, not a single pad is ripped. The soldering isn't the greatest because I haven't had my, uh, my normal iron, but there you go. In fact, there you go. That cap's leaking. That's what that liquid is. It's leaked. As you can tell, it's dry and crusty and... Yeah. So I'm pretty certain that cap is in line with this little ceramic here, so that's probably why it's reading zero ohms. But obviously this cap is doing the brunt of the work. So we're going to replace them. I'm also going to put uh, some closer values to what they should be on this one. See what happens. Right, okay, so change of plan. So what I was going to do after I noticed that I've put the wrong value caps on this one, I was going to chuck the, the right values on and power it up, but then I realised that I have took a diode off here for some reason. So 
I think I need to replace these coils and that diode, and then we'll try recapping it and see what happens. But uh, I just thought I'd show you real quick that this method uh, it doesn't do any damage to the board, assuming that you're careful. Um, I've been moaned at quite a few times on YouTube and by other people like, oh, don't do that, don't do that with the pliers because it'll break the cap, uh, break the pad off. It'll only break the pad off if you're if you're not careful. These boards are not the uh, not the best in terms of the PCB quality. I mean, like with this one, you can just see how brown it's gone in areas that it's gotten warm up. But um, these get hot, by the way. But um, th th there's a lot of little traces going to like the the cap or pads, as you can see. So obviously, if you're there wiggling it off with a pair of pliers, like you're just gonna snap the pads. So um, and be careful when you are doing that. I'm not trying to like hide anything there either. So uh, oh yeah, I'm, I decided to replace that 100 two 220s. 222s, that's a 10 obviously, that's another 10, that's a 47. Replacing all those, just so that all of those can be ruled out of being the cause of the issue. Um, all the 470s, I'm assuming they're perfectly fine. I have ripped them off on uh, several other previous boards to test and I've never found one bad, so these are all good and can be left alone so we're gonna get these all off okay right so i've put all the caps on and we're gonna basically put the board back in the unit and we're gonna give it a test so see what happens so as you can see that they all just fit in there nothing's shorting nothing's gonna snap when it's put back together hopefully so Give it a go. Okay, so I've been using this Zeppelin now for around a week and it's been working fine. Been turning it on and off. And it's been absolutely perfect. So confident to give it back to the customer. Oh, I've just fully turned it off, haven't I? But um what I'm gonna do just real quick is take it back apart and just double check. Uh, all of the soldering on the capacitors and then I'm just going to go over them with a bit of hot glue to uh, Just ensure that they're fully secured. So I'm going to redo that now. So we're taking out this board again and um, I'm just going to go over the soldering on the capacitors and just try and secure them a bit better. I Mean they are pretty much perfectly on there um, Obviously I bent the legs um, like an L shape so that they touch the board as well as having a mechanical bond to it. Um, because you don't want to just put them on there. I mean, they'll probably be all right, obviously, like, but you just want to make sure that there's some kind of structural rigidity to them. Like. Um, but in terms of this repair, I'm not really 100% confident that it's resolved whatever is going on with this speaker. Um, I mean, after I took some of them cap, well, all of these caps out of circuit, they were all badly out of spec on the the ESR, so the, the, they definitely were faulty. But have I just maybe improved another component's uh, input, which is making it operate fine for now, or or what could I have done by replacing these capacitors? You know, but I'm gonna say it's repaired because. I can't really test it any longer than I, I, I've kept the speaker now. So, um, it's one of them really, it's going to have to be put it back together, probably test it for another couple hours and then send it back and hope for the best because I really can't be bothered taking this thing apart again. So. Just going to go over the soldering once more just to be 100%. Uh, put a bit of glue on the caps. Um, obviously, don't get the glue anywhere on the board where it can uh, possibly touch any other components. These boards are sensitive. I'm just going to dab a bit on there just to add a bit of a structure to 
this thing. In fact, what I'm going to use is silicone thermal plaster instead because it's non-conductive non and when it hardens it, it it's on there, so we'll do that. So I think that's a wrap for this speaker. I mean, I've, I've had it running for another day or so right now and it's been working perfectly, so um, I'm going to send it back and just see what happens. Hopefully it's going to be alright from now on. And there's something weird going on in the reflection there. I hope that hasn't distracted anyone. Um, but I hope this isn't copyrighted either. I don't think it is. And weirdly, this silverback remote works as well. It needs a new battery, I think, though. Honestly, I really do like the Zeko. I've still got my one in the living room as well. I don't plan on getting rid of it anytime soon either. Um, it's just a bit of a shame that um, I can't really seem to figure out these DSP boards, but the other board that I repaired in the first video, I am going back to that board because I found a few more parts that, uh, that were faulty, so I'm going to try those and see if we can get it to switch on again, but um, that's been a repair for an intermittent power fault with the, Ze the Zeppelin Air. And give it a good clean as well, so. Hopefully it should, it's cleaned up pretty good as well, you know, it's in good condition. The cloth isn't ripped either, on either side. So, I mean, it does look a bit discoloured, doesn't it? Well, that side, I think that that's been sat in the sun more than that side. You can see it in person sort of as well. Um, but you can't really notice it that much. So yeah, um, hopefully this helps somebody if you have one of these that you've repaired the power supply on, but then afterwards it's it still intermittently powers on and off, and even in standby mode you'll turn it back on and it'll just flash over and over and it won't boot up properly. So um, let's keep these things out of the bin because they're nice. So thanks for watching.